What's up guys, it's Brian with NRS. We've got another Pro Series video this week. We're in Scottsdale, Arizona with seven-time world champion header, Jake Barnes. I'm Jake Barnes, seven-time world champion team roper. Uh, started rodeoing in 1980, been to 27 NFRs, and I feel that I've won, you know, most of the rodeos throughout the year after, you know, 40 years of rodeoing. But, you know, rodeo's been my lifestyle, you know, for the longest time. I've been roping all my life, and, you know, it's just, uh, it's just a way of life for me. Get up in the morning, feed my horses, saddle my horses and rope all day, whether it's training horses or competing. And, you know, I've used a lot of product, you know, throughout the years and I have specific things that work well for me. I'm gonna try to stick with, you know, all, all of the, the right stuff. Okay, one of the things that I'm gonna talk about here, the common, you know, I do a lot of roping clinics. Did, did over 30 roping clinics last year, over 900 students and, uh, you know, it's like going to the doctor. You know, we see a lot of the same symptoms. Two of the most common things in roping, problems that people have is, well, actually three. Slow cattle, lower number of ropers don't like slow cattle, and that's the majority of the cattle that you're gonna rope is slow cattle. You have problems roping slow cattle. I can, I can spot you guys a, a mile away for the fact that you don't know how to rope them, so it's a problem, so you end up splitting the horns. The other one is waving it off the horns. Most of the time that happens from uh, too stiff of a rope, not rating your horse. And a lot of people think that it's the way that you pull your slack, which it does. All of those, you know, can have a factor in it. But I feel that the main ingredient that waving it off the horns, that you don't throw the right loop. I learned this years and years ago, uh, practicing at a guy's ranch roping muleys. And I kept roping them around the eyes and I would throw a perfect loop with a curl right behind their the head and so when I grew up roping everybody thought that it was the way that you pulled your slack and the way that I was taught you rope and you pull your slack down by your hip well now the way everybody ropes you rope and you pull your slack out the side that was taboo that was that was a no-no so one of the things what I feel is the type of loop that you put on so I you can see you know I've roped the dummy all my life and I try to perfect my loop and so what I do on this is what I, I want to get the tip down when I'm roping smaller horn cattle. It's a little bit smaller loop, but learning how to put the loop up over the steer's back and use my curl to lock the loop on the horns. Like that right there. If, the, if your rope's a little bit stiff and you throw a real flat loop and it, come around, it comes around and hits the steer side solid, it's gonna open back up and then when you yank it, it's gonna flip it off. So, you know, and everyone has their own their own theory on this, but this, that's the theory that I use. Tip down and make the curl. Worst case scenario, your curl will come over and lock on the horn, but you're gonna pull your slack fast so that doesn't happen. Or you can put it on real flat, just, and not use a whole lot of curl so the tip of your rope doesn't hit side okay so the other one horns. okay so the theories on that is you know what, what we were taught forever growing up as kids because we had no internet we had no teachers so it was just our grandpa uncle uh fellow friend that wrote you know anytime you just split the horns you go back up to your buddy and say what happened they say you dropped your shoulder you dropped your elbow you didn't follow through okay so for me it's angle okay so what you have to understand is the way that the loop the loop goes and, and you can it just depends on how you perceive it too some people say well you rope right horn left horn and you rope them both at the same time i feel that i rope them both at the same time but the bottom strand of the rope is what's going to catch the right horn top strand that's going to catch the left horn so i feel more more than anything it's the follow through that when you when you let go of the rope you let go over there 
And then, because you're higher than your target, so when your loop's coming down to catch the horns, you let go too soon, and then you want to go for your slack, so you lose con you lose control of the top strand. Okay, so this is like putting a puzzle together. So, I focus on the whole head. Okay, two parts to my rope. Bottom has got to go under the right horn. Top strand's got to go over the, the left horn. So I, I focus on the whole head, but my concentration is on the left horn and the top strand of the rope of making sure in my follow through that I get past the left horn at, in my delivery. And it's more of a feel than anything. Okay, so I'm gonna miss this time. So that's where you that's where you get the theory of dropping your shoulder, dropping your elbow, but more than anything is making sure that you follow through. So I'm just real conscious of making sure that I get past that left horn before I start going for my slash. 